Hi, and welcome to Libby Presents Ghost News Network. Today is our paranormal discussion. So actually, Mike has a topic for us. Mike, what do you got for us today? So I was, I was browsing the internet, and I found, I guess, a post. It wasn't on my Facebook or anything like that. It was a post through like some kind of paranormal forum. And somebody made a post about... Um, it was kind of an interesting topic, like, about ghosts and how you can... I guess, like, kind of leading more towards, like, the Ghostbuster movie type end of it. Like, okay. how to get rid of it using scientific methods, I guess. And so it had a good starting line. But he started off with saying, you know, he's got many years under his belt in the paranormal field. Doesn't say how many. So right there, I'm like, all right, well, mm. that's different. But And then he goes into, he talks about ions, right. which not many people talk about yeah. ions in the paranormal right. and how that could effect and um, basically he's talking about how don't ever speak in truth when it comes to the paranormal unless it's a fact and everything else is a theory so right. but he talks about how ghosts are a certain density there there's a certain ionic rate that they're giving off and by saying that by stating that as a fact in theory Realistically, you can be able to use different types of equipment, whether it be, you know, the ionic breeze, for instance, or like a, an ion generator and talking about electromagnetic fields to try to get rid of a certain type of entity. Interesting theory. I can already flip that over, but go ahead. But I can already... <laughs> when he talked about how when he started to bring into more of the demonic end of, um, you know, with the demonic spirit... It's going to give off negative ions, mm. and yeah. angels right. Angels are going to give positive more ion. of a positive ion effect. That's, that's right there, how that you don't know how that works. That's that's it. It, there you go. And that's where I, I kind of That's not how that works. Negative ions have a positive effect on you. <laughs> and <laughs> positive ions have a yeah. negative effect on your body. You just completely so, discredit yourself. Exactly. <laughs> and that's science. Yeah, like, that's, you can Google that shit. Yeah, like, that's not hard to find. Well, the ionic breeze, I have one. It's it's basically, the ionic breeze is an air purifying system that it takes air in positive and negative, and it negatively charges ion particles and pushes it out. Right. And that's what most ionic breezes do. A lot of air purification systems, that's what they do. They push out negative ions, not positive. Yeah. So when you talk about demons being on a negative ion base and angels being on a positive ion base, I'm like, that makes no yes. sense. Um, first off, when you bring religion and, and angels and demons into something, and you talk factual, I mean, right there is... Yeah. Well, but. first thing I'm going to say is this, just to backtrack, yeah, he's yeah, literally absolutely. taking, for those of you that are watching YouTube, I dress up as a Ghostbuster, <laughs> I do charity events and all these other things, that movie has been a part of my life, I know it inside and outside and backwards and forwards, right. like nobody's business. Um, that being said, he's literally taking lines from the scene, mm -hmm. after they see the first ghost in the library, when Egon is walking with the PKE meter, and he, he says that, sure. he says that uh, if a ghost has a constant ionization rate, we can really bust some heads in a spiritual sense. Meaning that if a ghost does perform within a certain spectrum of ionization rate, we have an air ion counter, for example, right. and you can figure out what that ion rate is, you can use other means, in this time, proton charges in the Ghostbusting movie, to grab the ghost. Mm -hmm. That's what this guy is essentially saying. He's right. taking the line from Ghostbusters, and yes, that theory, theory, right. not fact, right. is true. The, the, as I've stated in a previous video, uh, that ghosts... Uh, uh, that Dan Aykroyd was very into the paranormal and all these other things, um, and his history with his father and Peter Aykroyd, like it goes back generations about the paranormal, um, which we've we've already discussed. But the other thing is to say that if a ghost is uh, giving off positive ions, that if you use negative ions, that you could push them out? That's what he's saying? Basically, yeah. And the same concept so, of like EMF. So let me ask you this. Right. How do we know that that's what's happening? What if a ghost does give off positive ions, so it's in, in theory it would be a negative spirit? 
Right. It would be a negative In spirit. Theory, yes. So if we put negative ions, who's to say we wouldn't change that spirit's personality to its more lighter side and making it more friendly ghost? <laughs> Ha -ha. And we've done we've done that Shh. test from Annabelle the Catholic. <laughs> we did we did a test. I'm not okay. kidding now. We, we we used to have the office in in at my house. We used to meet up in the in the garage. But yep. at one in the winter times it got really cold. We used to meet up in my apartment in the basement. Yep. And there was times where it got intense. I mean meetings got intense. Like people were ready to kill each other. Yeah. So me and one of our old investigators, Cheryl. Yep. She knew I had the eye on the three. She's like, can we do a test? Like. Two hours prior, turn it on, let it run through the whole meeting, just see what happens. Don't tell anybody. We didn't tell anybody. So we did it. Whole mood changed. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's definitely... Right. The science is there. Right. But um, I get what he's saying where, like, you know, you take two magnets and, and you know, you, you push one and it kicks the other one out. Like, and you're kind of pushing it away. I kind of get it, but you have to prove that a ghost has that type of density, right. has that type of charge, and number one, now, prove a ghost exists before you start yeah, adding yeah, a bunch so, of stuff to it. The know? thing is, is the thing is, is that you would need to know exactly the exact ions that ghost is emitting, <laughs> right. Right. and the counter ions that you would need in order to push it out. Right. But ions don't work like magnets. Right. Magnets are not giving off ionic. Uh, mm -hmm. readings. They, mm -hmm. they don't give off ions. The, the magnets don't work like that. Right. Right. The, it's, you're, talking, you're talking apples and oranges. You're, you're, totally you're, you're talking about magnets and then that's like me saying, well, you know, it's really cold in here. If we put some heat in this room, the ghost is going to leave. <laughs> right. right. You know, I mean, you could say, oh, well, the EMF is really low in here. If we pump some EMF in here, it's gonna pump. It's gonna push the ghost out. You can literally say that with anything. And, and you know what this room needs? Gamma radiation. And, and I can counter, <laughs> I can counter that by saying, well, the ghost need, it needs energy to manifest. So by you doing that, it's gonna take draw in that energy and manifest. Yeah. It ain't yeah. going anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So it, it's you know it's like a catch twenty two. No matter what you say, it's but never. My whole thing is never speak in truths in this field unless you know it's a truth. And. If you say you have so many years... I was just going to ask that, too. You know, say how many years. Right. Because you know what? Your so many years might be, well, I have three years in the field. Well, good. I have 15. Yeah. I, I got, have 550 Coming up on 14. I've got 14 years that's coming proven. up on. That's, that's not me saying bullshit numbers. Yeah. That's me proving that. So my credibility is there. You can see my rap sheet of what I have. Yeah, we, we, we write sheet. everything down. So, we log everything. And even years you know, don't mean necessarily to me. I mean, I've been doing this for a year now, and I would say, I, I can safely say, I probably know a lot more than other people who claim to be absolutely. paranormal in this 100%. 100%. So, yeah, because, yeah, because absolutely. you go out on a weekly basis. Some right. people don't go out. Uh, there are groups out there that meet up once a month, once every three months, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. And good. Good for you. Get out. Go out. Do it. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Whatever you can add to the field, add to the field. More power to you. I'm not discrediting anybody that wants to go out there and do this stuff. But don't say you have years of experience. Let's and, let's talk talk numbers. And don't call yourself a professional. Like yeah, I hate no, that. No. Like I can sit here and say yeah, I'm a professional marijuana this year because you know what? I've been doing it for how many years? I've been doing it for fifteen. The years. The difference is the difference you is know? we wake up, especially running the group we wake up right. we're writing reports we're doing tech every week we're doing case management every week we're mm -hmm. we're doing work every day about the paranormal you're right. researching houses you're researching your tech equipment and stuff like that mike and i are looking into new equipment or we're you know working on new theories right. and breaking down other pieces of equipment like there's always something going. Yeah. we're constantly doing stuff on a weekly basis yep. um on a daily basis sometimes no, too no. we're typing up reports no. and you know, taking those reports and comparing it to old reports yep. to see if there's, you know, any correlation between what's happening and when it's happening right. and where it's happening and what the weather patterns are and whether all of those mix up. Are you doing that to call yourself a professional? Right, exactly. Or are you just going out looking for ghosts and then never looking at your footage again? <laughs> are you not using cameras? Are you not documenting what's happening? Yeah. We can literally prove every investigation we've ever done on whether we've been on them. Yeah. Um, Anybody have anything you want to add? Or you guys are good? I think uh, you guys covered everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> rage, rage, rage. <laughs> rage. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining us on this latest edition uh, of Paranormal Discussion. What do you think about this topic? Let us know in the comments below. 
How many years or how many investigations do you think you would need to call yourself a professional paranormal investigator? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Also, please give this, comment, uh, this video a like. Uh, if you want to comment, please do. And subscribe. And don't forget to click that little notification bell so you get all of the information on when all of our videos are uploaded to YouTube. So thank you guys very much for joining us again. And until next time, take care, guys. Oops.